close till I get up. Time is barely on our side. I don't wanna waste what's left. The storms we chase are leading us, and love is all we'll ever trust. Yeah, no, I don't wanna waste what's left. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So as you can tell by the title of today's video, I'm going to be sharing my birth story with Asher. Um, so he is here. Um, he is a month old now, so it's like crazy uh, to think how fast this whole month just went by. Um, I feel like I just had him. Um, it's been a crazy month. It's been a crazy adjustment. I'm not gonna lie. I've been struggling. I'm not gonna cry, but I've been struggling with postpartum depression. Um, I thought it was just baby blues at first, um, but it's just getting worse. I am going to be getting help. Um, I, yeah, it's okay, baby. Hi. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> it's so hard um, to feel like down and discouraged and everything when you have such a beautiful baby um, and you have a beautiful toddler. Yeah. Besides that, I'm gonna do a whole other video probably on. Um, how I'm feeling and stuff. Oh, my hair. A little greasy. <laughs> I did my makeup for like the first time in over a week. Um, so that's crazy. But my hair is greasy. And I didn't put dry shampoo in it because I forgot until just now. But anyways, I wrote down everything um, from when I was in labor. Let's see. Okay, so... As most of you guys know, um, if you guys follow me on Instagram or anything, you guys know I did have preeclampsia. I actually had preeclampsia with Landon, and I never found out until the very end of my pregnancy with him, until that day, and I ended up getting induced and having Landon. This time around, I knew I had it from the very beginning. Um, is that? Is that breast milk on my shirt? Ignore that. I knew from the beginning I actually was showing early signs of preeclampsia with Asher. Um... And so I was being monitored by uh, twice a week, every week, um, starting like halfway through our pregnancy until the very end. Um, and it's just because my blood pressure was really high. But the thing about my blood pressure, my blood pressure would be extremely high one moment and then extremely low the next moment. So I, like blood pressure just kept fluctuating. And it would do that within like an hour. Like it would be at like 150 over like 80 and then it would be like 99 over like 50 and it was just like kind of jump um but it was like the weirdest thing and even they said they were like that shouldn't normally happen like yeah it can like go up and down depending on like what you eat and stuff but to have it constantly go up and down was a little like weird but it was what it was um so I was monitored I had to take a 24-hour urine every week for like I want to say like oh it's like two months straight it was ridiculous. It sucked having to do a pee test. Like, that sucked. Um, I had to get blood work done every week. It was just, like, the most dreading pregnancy, like, halfway through and then towards the end. Like, I had the most problems. I had the worst migraines this pregnancy. I suffer from migraines normally, um, but this pregnancy, they were so bad. Um, I was at the hospital probably like, once a week just for my migraine. And I'd have to get like IVs and medication. And there were so many times I had to have Cameron get out of work because I couldn't drive after the medication they gave me. Um, it was hard. And I went to um, no stress testing, NST. Um, and that's where they actually did a lot of my um, monitoring on my blood pressures. And the two nurses there, they saw me and they were like, I feel so bad for you. They knew how I felt. They knew I was having like, I was struggling. Um, but towards the end, um, they kept saying, like, we're just waiting until you're 37 weeks. We're waiting until you're 37 weeks. We're waiting until you're 37 weeks. And at one point, I had a scare. Um, and I, they thought I was going to have to deliver at 35 weeks because um, they thought I was leaking, like, amniotic fluid. And the way my blood pressures were and the way I was feeling, they were like, we're going to have to deliver you. Um, but thankfully, it was a fluid. So they are like, well, you're just going to have to suck it up with everything else until we can get you to 37. So once I made it to 36 and 6, 
I went to the hospital again because I was having the worst migraine that just wouldn't go away and I had it since Monday. So I had the migraine from Monday all the way up to Friday. Sorry, Monday all the way up to Thursday. Thursday I went to do, um, they gave me like medication and stuff um, and I couldn't drive. I went home and they're like, well, if the migraine continues till tomorrow, you need to call us because you need to come back in. Well, the migraine continued, it never went away. Um, and so they told me to come back in, so I went in, and basically the doctor was there. She's like, you know what, I think the best thing for us to do to you and for your body and for your health and everything is to deliver you tomorrow, because I'll be 37 weeks. I was 37 weeks that Friday. Wait. Yeah, I was 37 weeks that Friday, and then they're like, we're going to induce you on that Saturday. So I was 31. <laughs> Pregnancy. <laughs> so on that Saturday, I was 37 and 1, so they are like, you can deliver. Um, and so they are like... You're going to do another 24-hour urine um, starting at 5 p.m. on Friday night and then until Saturday at 5 p.m. And then call between 5 and 8 to see when the nurses want you to come in so that we can start inducing you. Well, I called like three times on Saturday um, and finally they were like, oh, you can come in now at around like 9 o'clock. I was like, that's so late. But I went around 9. My mom came. Cameron came because we were like thinking like, this is it. I had my friend China and Julian here to watch Landon. Um, and I was like, this is it. Like, we're going to go in. We're going to get induced. And we're going to have the baby. Well, I went in on Saturday. Now let me open this up. So I checked in at 9 p.m. to get induced. I went into triage pretty early because they want to obviously check me for everything and do all the vitals before they put me into a room. And then so it took them forever. 10.30, they told me that they wanted me to wait to induce me. So this doctor, I actually had him before, and he's very like by the book, and he was just like, I don't want to induce you um, just to induce you because you're having migraines. Um, and that's the reason why they were going to induce me, was because of the migraines, and I was pretty eclamptic. Um, but he was like, I don't want to induce you just for that reason. And I was like, well, I have, like, basically, I had... If you look pretty clear, yeah, I had every single every single symptom, and he said it. He goes, it's almost like you copy and paste it, and he's like, it's just so crazy that you feel this way. And I was like, oh, honestly, I don't want to be here. I wanted to go full term with him because I didn't get to go full term with Landon. So in my like, in my opinion, he was like, well, so like for me, like I didn't want to get induced. Like I cried when they told me, and I was just like, you know what? I gotta do what's best for my baby because me being like sick and not feeling great was causing his heart rate to dip. <laughs> I don't know if I mentioned that. Um, but he was just like, well, if you don't want to get induced, I recommend not inducing you. And then I was like, okay, that's fine. And then he came back in and was like, um, you know what? They never did an updated um, growth scan. He's like, so if you do get induced, I want to see how big this baby is. If it's small, because if you're preeclamptic, obviously like, um, it can cause a placenta not to have the baby grow like normally I guess um, so I was like um, they never told me to do another one except for my halfway point and he was like yeah that's strange like you should have had one done a couple times especially since you were getting your lump checked out because I had a lump on my liver and they were checking that out quite often and they were like I'm surprised they never did it but they didn't so he was like I want you to go do that and I was like Okay, so at 11.20, um, I sent my mom home. I was like, well, I'm just going home. I may not be getting induced tonight, so I may be coming home in a few hours. I don't know. I was like, but you should just go home and get some actual sleep because it could possibly not be happening tonight. They checked me, uh, my cervix too, at that time just to see if I was even dilated at all. And I was two centimeters dilated when they checked me. And then around 12.30, they sent me down finally to get my girl scan done it took forever for whatever reason they were like really slow at 12 30 a.m they sent me to get my girl scan done and the girl scan was actually showing that he was like seven pounds um and that he was like perfect like everything was healthy with him um so they were like yeah i don't think that's gonna be like an issue Mama. yes baby are you eating good job yes honey so once I did my girl scan, they came back and they were like, how are you feeling? How's your migraine? And I was like, you know, like my migraine sucks. Like it hurts so bad. Um, I was super swollen. <laughs> you can tell with my hands, it's not that I was swollen. Um, and he was just like, you know, like 
I'm thinking maybe we should just because they gave me medication before I did my ultrasound for the girl scan and nothing it still wasn't working so they're like maybe we should just induce you tonight um just to be safe since you are like having all these symptoms he's like I want obviously what's best for you and what's gonna help you um he's like but because you're having the migraines I'm gonna have to give you magnesium when we induce you and at first I was like okay um okay just gave Landon some fruit and just put Asher down so hopefully I can get the rest of this done pretty quick um so yeah they decided to induce me and they were like well we're gonna have to give you magnesium for the migraines because you can have seizures this and that and stuff I was like okay um and he's like I'm not gonna lie to you it's gonna make your labor awful and I was like I'm ready for it like I'm good that was awful <laughs> um but yeah so they end up like checking me in into a room to get induced and stuff um and they actually put the balloon in around 2 a.m and they put the balloon in and i and it was actually better than the first time when i had the balloon done with landon it was god awful i was bleeding everywhere the second time it actually wasn't bad at all um but you know when you get induced that balloon um the volleyball does have like a lot of pressure and it hurts um so i got that done at 2 a.m and then at 3 45 a.m i got the catheter put in which i never actually had a catheter put in with landon um because i had, i went to the bathroom and everything even when i got my epidural they never put the catheter in so i don't know they said they have to but they never did with my first um so that was different um so they put the catheter in and then they also did the magnesium at the same time and so they stuck the magnesium into my arm um and it burned so bad i was crying because they stick it in like your whole arm just burns um and it burns for a while and oh my god it was awful but it was like that first initial um intake of it but then afterwards i was on a magnesium drip for the rest of my preg um, the rest of my labor and then 24 hours after i gave birth because of for whatever reason i don't know that's what they do um so that was awful like the worst and it made me feel awful i felt god awful i just felt so sick to my stomach and i just felt like just sluggish and i was just i don't recommend anyone if you have to get put on magnesium god bless you because it sucks um but yeah so they pretty much like was like we'll try to sleep and stuff and i was like okay like i'll try my best but um yeah that was just awful because like obviously they're coming in every like 30 minutes to an hour to empty like my pee and stuff and i was on a bunch of ivs too because they're trying to flush the fluid because the magnesium and everything um so i was peeing a lot like my outtake was just crazy um and then so around 8 a.m on the on sunday morning so the 15th um my balloon felt uh, my balloon came out and the reason why my balloon came out was because of the nurse. Um, she asked me, she's like, hey, so are you tugging on it? Um, you know, just to see, like, tug to make sure, like, it's opening or whatever. I was like, to be honest with you, no, I haven't because I don't know which one is the catheter and which one is the um, balloon because I don't want to pull the catheter out because that's going to hurt. <laughs> so um, she's like, that's fair. So she pulled it a little bit and she goes, oh, yeah, you're ready. And then it pulled, she pulled a little bit more and it just came out completely. Um, my water did not break. Which with Landon, my water did break as soon as my balloon came out. Um, but this time around, it did not. So when your balloon comes out, you're about four centimeters dilated, which sucks because it's like, all right, I was two centimeters at 2 a.m. And now, or not 2 a.m., at like 11 p.m. on Saturday night. And now I'm only four centimeters the next morning. So around 9 a.m., they gave me the Pitocin. So they started with the Pitocin. Um, and I was just like looking at like my little machine thing of all the like iv and the magnesium and the pitocin i was like jesus uh, so they gave me pitocin at 9 a.m and then around 11 45 i had some apple juice and then i snuck a few donuts in and i know you're not supposed to eat but i was like bro i have not eaten and i'm probably not gonna have this baby today um so cameron got donuts and i was like let me have a few munchkins so i had a few of them and i know you're not supposed to so if any nurses doctors are like watching this i'm sorry um because i know it's not good for like if you like have um if you have to do anesthesia or whatever but i did um and then so around 1 15 on s 
Saturday morning, they started putting me on like leg compression things um, on my legs to help with the blood clots. If you guys don't know, I also did get a blood clot in my leg with Asher during during my pregnancy, and I had a blood clot on my side near my rib, um, at a bruised rib, and I had a blood clot on my side from Asher kicking. So uh, they did give me the leg compressions. It's okay. They did do the leg compressions on my legs, and those things suck because I get scared every time they would, like, inflate and then, like, pop back down. Um, so they started doing that at, like, 1.15. And then finally, at 9 p.m. Sunday night, my water broke. And the reason why my water broke was my doctor broke my water. Um, and the reason I was only, like, 5 centimeters dilated, and he was like, your water hasn't broke yet. Um, this is going to take a little bit longer. I was literally crying on and off like this whole labor because I was just in so much pain. Um, and you can't move when you're on magnesium, so you're pretty much on bed rest. So I was just like in, I was just in so much pain. I was so over it. I was hungry. I was tired. Um, I just wanted to have this baby already. Um, so yeah, he broke my water at nine. Um, and I was only five centimeters dilated. So once he broke my water, the pain was I was in so much pain. I was like, oh my god. I was like, fuck, 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 fuck. Excuse my language, but I was in so much pain. I was like, this hurts. And I was only five centimeters. I was like, I can't, I can't get it yet. I can't get it yet. I can't get it yet. Um, but I was in so much pain that I was like, no, I need to. I need something. I need pain medicine. I need something. So I called my nurse and I was like, listen, I need something because I'm in pain like I don't really know if I want to do the epidural yet, but I need something because, oh, my hair is staticky. Like, I need something because I'm just in that much pain. Like, I need something. And so she's like, okay, well, I can go get you something. Like, um, she's like, I'll be right back. So I thought she was going to give me, like, some kind of, like, medicine uh, to help with, like, just the contractions for now. Um, but, no, she ended up coming back. She's like, listen, she's like, you said you're in pain. She's like, I can get you medication. She's like, or if you want um the doctor is doing an epidural right next door she's like he can come in here really quick to do yours as well if you want the epidural um she's like if not that's fine she's like i'll just go get the medication she's like i just thought i would offer it since he's gonna be right next door it's like nope that's fine let's do the epidural at that point i was just in so much pain i was like i need it done so i got my epidural done at 9 30 um which sucked because Um, um, which sucked, the epidural sucked because this time around my, um, camera wasn't holding me, it was the nurse, um, and the first time I got it done, Cameron was actually holding me still, and it was just nice to have him, like, in my ear, kind of, like, telling me, like, it's okay, breathe, this, that, but thank God the nurse that I had was amazing, um, uh, the contractions were unbearable at this point. Um, and I was like shaking and I like barely could move and I think that's the reason why I have the nurse cause, instead of Cameron was because I really couldn't move much so she actually had to help me get into position um, so they did the epidural and my epidural basically failed um, I was only numb on all of my right side and my left side was not numb so I could feel my whole leg I could feel like my left side of my vagina I could feel like the left side of like my like this area um, so I was just like, okay, what the hell? I forget if my mom came in during my first epidural or during the second. I think she came in during the first, because at this point I called my mom and was like, mom, I need you. I need you so bad, like, I'm in pain. Um, I don't care when I'm having this baby. It's probably not going to be until tomorrow, but I need you. Um, and she's like, that's fine, I'll come in right now. So, um, China, I'm pretty sure, dropped my mom off. Um. Or did Cameron pick her up? No, I'm pretty sure... I forget. No, no. I think China dropped her off because Cameron went downstairs to pick her up. So yeah, my mom came finally. And then they did the second time. They did my epidural again. Because I was like, no, like this isn't... I'm in pain. Like, I, the contractions were so bad, I was like screaming. Um, because I was feeling it. And I was only feeling it in that one spot on my left side. And it was just like the worst pain I've ever felt. Um... I never felt contractions like that with my first labor, so I was like, what the hell is going on? Um, so he was like, basically, like, if I do this again, he's like, 
it can completely nothing can work and I was like oh god and he's like and I can't do it a third time he's like I won't do it a third time and I was like okay he's like so let's hope we get this done like get it done right the second time and I was like okay and he couldn't actually get it in between like my spine because I guess I have like um scarring um from like my first epidural so he couldn't actually get in which is like completely normal I guess but because of that he couldn't really get in between he poked me so many times I had so many poke barks in my back um and I was in so much pain it was just like the worst like having failed epidural sucked um but he fixed it around 10 30 so it took a whole hour of me being in pain and feeling it for him to finally come back and do the second one um and then around 2 a.m I was finally eight centimeters dilated basically they had to put more fluid back inside of back inside because of the baby uh, I guess like he went too long without the fluid since they broke my water um what time did they break my water at 9 p.m they broke my water so at 2 a.m they had to put more fluid inside because I guess like it was too long without it and something was going on with him I forget what was going on I think his heart rate was dipping or we couldn't really get like a good heart rate on him so they end up putting um the what is that thing called the thing that goes on their head um not a catheter um you know what i'm talking about though they stick it inside of your cervix and they kind of attach it to their head um i know not everyone likes doing it but they couldn't read his um his heart rate during the whole thing um and basically like throughout i forgot to mention this but throughout the whole me getting the magnesium they had to come in several times because my blood pressure would drop to the point where it would say like i was dead on the monitor and no, i wasn't uh but that's how low my blood pressure would get so they would like come running in and then inject me with like i forget what it was but exactly what it's called but they would come running in and like inject me with something and it would just help with like my blood pressure and like heart rate and stuff i don't really know um, but I guess it's like common with like magnesium and stuff um, because like when you're on Pitocin and you're on magnesium basically the Pitocin is trying to speed up your pregnancy and help you go in like having contractions and everything pregnancy helps speed up your contractions uh, where the magnesium actually slows down your contractions and that magnesium is actually given to people who are going into early labor um, so they basically fight against each other so that's why my labor took forever but yeah so um they put fluid back inside of me and then that's when they did the thing on his head and then around 4 15 a.m i was finally nine centimeters dilated and then that's when started, they started doing the peanut ball to kind of like help i don't know open me up a little bit like open my legs up and stuff around like six o'clock i was like ooh, because my nurse at this point like she was checking me like every 30 minutes to every hour um for my cervix and around six o'clock she was like okay you're ready like you're ready and i was like oh yeah like at this point like i didn't feel ready but i was like mm, if you say so and she goes well you're feeling pressure and i was like yeah you know what? i kind of feel like i have to poop which tmi but that's how you know you're ready to push is like when you feel like you have that pressure in your back end that you need to like go number two is pretty much when you're ready to start pushing um and so she's like okay yeah let me get the doctor and stuff and i was like okay yeah take it down like i felt great i didn't feel like he was coming at this point my epidural was working really nice i mean at this point I could still feel a lot of pressure of all the contractions, but I wasn't feeling any pain. Yay! So she went and got the doctor and everything, and the doctor took me too, and he's like, yeah, you're ready. Thank you, Landon. Um, so he pretty much like, set everything up um, and he, telling me how to push, because I was like, he's like, you remember how to push, right? I was like, you know what? No, I kind of, I kind of forgot. And so he basically told me what he's going to do. My mom was on my right side, my nurse was on my left side, and then Cameron was at my head. I knew Cameron didn't want to be like fully right there. Um, so he was at my head. Um, and they're like, all right. I couldn't tell when I was having a, a lot of like, major contractions. Um, and I couldn't tell what the start of my contraction until I was like halfway through them. Um, and basically, like my nurse was like, all right, you're having a contraction. Are you ready to push? I was like, yeah, I'm ready. So she helped me. And basically, I have it written down. I pushed within two contractions, six pushes in five minutes, and Asher was born at 6.31 a.m. on December 16th, 2019. He was six pounds, 13 ounces, 20 inches long, and his head circumference was a 13.5.
And what's crazy is my little Asher was born on my birthday, which is 12-16, 1994. And I was born at 6 pounds, 13 ounces. Yes. And I was born at 7.31 a.m. So he's super close to my birthday. So yeah, I was in labor for almost like 28 hours. It was absolutely painful. Um, I, I'm definitely forgetting something. So if I'm forgetting anything, sorry. Um, but I was on magnesium for another full 24 hours after I gave birth. Because I guess that's what they do. Anyways, but yeah, that's pretty much my birth story. Um, I'm forgetting anything. Sorry, I don't know. It's, it wasn't even that long ago. It was only a month ago. But I think the worst memory ever. Um, but I felt awful being on magnesium. Um, I wasn't really able to do a lot after Azure was born. Like, I couldn't get up. I couldn't do, I couldn't pick him up from his little bassinet thingy. So I had to have Cameron help me, like, get him and stuff. But having him was amazing. During my labor and while I was getting my epidural done, I told Cameron, I was like, you're getting snipped. I'm having no more babies. I'm done. I'm never doing this again. And then I had him, and literally as I gave birth, the doctor's cleaning me up. I was literally like, okay, I, I want another one. Uh, having a baby is the best feeling in the world. Um, you know, you go through all that pain, and I like to say you kind of forget about it. Uh, you don't actually forget about the pain. But once you have them in your arms, it's like the best feeling in the world, and it's like everything, it made, everything is worth it. You know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, that is my birth story. Um, I hope I, I hope I got everything. I don't even know. But I'm so blessed, so thankful to have him and had healthy labor um, for the most part. I didn't have to have a C-section. Um, I didn't tear. I didn't rip or anything. Everything was like perfect. Uh, I pushed him super, super quick. The doctor was impressed with my pushing skills and I was like, I could push like so yeah thank you guys so much for watching i hope you guys enjoyed watching this little birth vlog if you guys have any questions or if i forgot anything or anything let me know down below or dm me on instagram um i have so many of you guys that dm me all the time on instagram and i love talking to you guys um i feel like i have actual friends when i talk to you guys uh, and i'll see you in the next one bye guys